Welcome to the Mayfield Renewables course on the National Electrical Code and the 2020 and 2023 requirements as it pertains to solar and solar plus storage systems. For those of you that maybe don't know me, my name is Ryan Mayfield. I'm the founder of Mayfield Renewables. I've been training on National Electrical Code for many years now, work with NABCEP, I've worked with community colleges, things like that to help demystify the code, help to bring the code to life. Qualified personnel is defined in Article 100, and that's defined as one who has the skills and knowledge related to construction and operation of the equipment. And so this is really a general requirement in code that qualified persons are the ones installing this our electrical systems, uh, This, but it's something that shows up in a few of our articles. So, so 706 explicitly calls it out. Reality the situation is, it's really your AHJ who is going to be able to define that and to uh, enforce that. 706.15 is disconnecting means. And in 2023, you see the language here. So means shall be provided to disconnect ESS from all wiring systems, other power systems utilization, and premises wiring system. So this was changed in from 2020. And in 2020, there's a list of three requirements. And the there's another list in 23. So that in the next slide, we're going to look at the B requirements. But I want to take a moment here and look at a few applications, a few of those images that we have. And so we'll look at these diagrams. How Where does 706 apply when we are talking about our grand scheme, our solar plus storage systems? So starting with the AC coupled system, you know, we have, we talked about the 690 is on the PV side up on the top there. Down below is where our 706 is gonna apply. You know, we're showing this for ease on our image. We're showing the energy storage, disconnect, multi-mode inverter. Those could all be one component. They could be separate. It's, it's basically, it's how is all this equipment listed together. So, um, and then we have a note there talking about if it's lead acid, if it's NICAD, if those are separate components, that would be 4, 480 is gonna be applying there. But again, most of our systems are 706. So you see here the components, the circuits where it's required or what we are going to be looking at 706 to tell us how to install things, the circuits and, th and which, how to size circuits, how to give them overcurrent protection, disconnects, all those kinds of things. So this gives us a nice visual representation of that. On a DC coupled system, so again, it's the same premise in terms of how we are or what we are uh, providing in terms of a backup power in this case, but it looks a little different and we have some different components in there. So you see a charge controller again. So you have that multi-mode inverter still. And so we have that delineation of where 690 stops at that PV system disconnect versus where the 706 is gonna apply. And again, 480, which we'll talk about in future in a future lesson here in this class. We'll talk about 480, how it what those requirements are, um, if those are separate components. And then finally, the standalone PV system. So looks just like the DC coupled. You could have a, I should, haven't said this yet, but you could have a standalone system that was AC coupled. There's nothing to say you can't do that. Um, really the, the differentiation here for standalone is the lack of utility being present. So again, where we see the requirements for 706 applying versus 690.